So, although Adam Smith's Wealth of Nation, Jean-Baptiste Jean said, Traité d'économie politique, or David Ricardo's Principles of Political Economy and Taxation, were not addressed to an expert and specialized, specialized and still less to a professional readership, they aimed at enlightening and instructing a learned public which was familiar with grammar, logic, rhetoric, Latin and Greek, literature and philosophy, including moral and political philosophy, the essentials of mathematics and natural sciences. Those people were actual or potential members of the political elite and had an experience in managing firms, companies, banks, and other institutions, or in, government, or in governing local counties, or even their uh, country as members of parliaments and cabinets. Even when they were novices uh, in political economy, um, they were able to understand and appreciate the subtleties and even the technicalities of economic analysis because their vocabulary was composite and their logical skill advanced enough to encapsulate new concepts in their wide intellectual background. Uh, they could grasp the novelties of physiocratic and Smithian political economy by comparing them with their knowledge of politics and 18th century economic debates. However, in the same period, a new phenomenon, announced by some earlier examples, gradually emerged as a necessary consequence uh, of the clash of the evolution of market society and of the class, and especially of the clash of ideologies that characterized the period following 1848. Um, and the rise of the so-called social question. A new genre of uh, elementary political economy textbooks emerged whose distinctive characteristics uh, were um, conciseness, plain language, and limited vocabulary, uh, examples taken from everyday life, and a market pedagogical approach often symbolized by the typical question and, um, question and answer structure of catechisms. Uh, their aim was introducing more to the point of view of political economy on private and public behavior than to the principles of economic theory, a diversity of categories of absolute beginners, as it were, ranging from school children to working class young and adult, adult members, high school and even university students and other non-expert readers. Like other types of lower literature, uh, these textbooks and their authors have rarely been taken seriously as a subject of investigation. Historians of economics have generally considered them as mere popularization of the theories of the great economists, thus overlooking the specific nature and content of these works. Even more re recent research on the dissemination and institutionalization of political economy has examined them only as an element of the broader phenomenon of the production of economic textbooks. I believe that it is time to investigate the nature of this literary genre by examining the phenomenon as a whole. Indeed, it is only by putting side by side the textbooks belonging to this category and comparing them uh, that we can appreciate the nature of the discourse they conveyed and the specific content they displayed, the aims they had, the social function that were attributed to them. This is, in any, uh, in any case, the aim of my paper. Uh, I divided the paper into three sections. Uh, the first one uh, is devoted to a, a review of the troops, uh, and I'll s summarize that it very much. The second one critically discussed the qualitative and quantitative criteria, criteria that can be adopted for a satisfactory definition and classification of this uh, literary genre. And section three provides a sort of analysis of the impact and sustainability of uh, elementary textbooks uh, in, uh, in, uh, in society. Well, uh, the, 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 the uh, in, the, in the first part, I, I examined the sa same examples, uh, some examples of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, elementary textbooks, starting from maybe the mother of all 19th century elementary textbooks, which is uh, Jean-Baptiste Says, Catechisme, L'Economie Politique, uh, 1815. Uh, 
says catechism as well as uh, uh, other, other works like, for example, uh, William Ellis' Outlines of Social Economy, which were published in 1846, uh, share uh, the same basic characteristics. Uh, um, for example, both these uh, treatises are divided into two parts. The first part is devoted to uh, explaining how uh, to uh, educate the forethought, industry, uh, thriftiness, uh, uh, in a way, rationality of individuals. And the second one aims, on the contrary, uh, to form a, a broader uh, view about the consequences of the law of political economy, laws of political economy on society. And in a way, it aims to, to create the basis for a, a large public opinion uh, informed by, uh, by political economy. So this is more or less the structure of this uh, of these, uh, uh, um, the structure and the aims uh, of these, uh, of these uh, uh, textbooks. I exam examined also other cases, uh, like, uh, for example, one which is very, uh, not very known, uh, Otto Hübner's Der Kleine Volkswirt, uh, the, 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 the Young Economist, in a way, uh, which was published in 1852, Millicent Garrett Fawcett, Political Economy for Beginners. Uh, Carlo Fontanelli's uh, uh, Manuale Popolare di Economia Politica, and other elementary textbooks that uh, were uh, um, written uh, and were aimed to secondary school uh, students uh, in various uh, countries, and also to university students in a mixed way, like Luigi Cossa's Primi Elementi di Economia Politica, 1875, and even Stanley Jevons' Political Economy, which was part of the Primer Series, 1878, first edition. Let me now um, uh, fix your attention on the definition of elementary textbook. When considering these and other examples of elementary textbooks, uh, textbook, the question arises of how to give uh, uh, a comprehensive definition that describes the, their characteristics and distinguishes them from other kinds of political economy textbooks that appeared in the 19th century. This definition is preliminary to a census of this literary genre, uh, which is still to be do. To, to, to do. Uh, the intended public is an important signal, in my opinion. Elementary textbooks aim, aimed at popularizing political economy among a variety of readers uh, uh, that are already listed in the introduction. Uh, when uh, these categories are mentioned, are either in the title or in the pre preface and conclusions, we can be fairly certain that we are in front of a textbook that, as seen above, uh, aimed at strengthening the economic virtues of people and forming their opinion about the market society in which they live. Sometimes it is the formal institution to which elementary textbooks are connected, be it primary or secondary school, university, popular universities, popular libraries, university extension, and the similar, uh, that justifies their uh, aims. Why, in other cases, they are sent to the press for a public in search of self-learning uh, instruments, even though all elementary textbooks, in a way, once they are published, are, as it were, alienated to a variety of subjects who decide to do of them what they prefer. Titles are ambiguous, if not misleading someone, uh, so, some, sometimes. Uh, sometimes what is called elementary treatise is not really elementary, or is addressed to a public that, that has nothing to do with the categories above descri described. So the title is not a good uh, uh, um, aspect uh, in order to uh, classify this, this kind of literature. Another characteristic these textbooks share is their size. The ideal measure is little more uh, than 100 pages and not much more than 200. Says catechism uh, adds uh, uh, 160 pages. Ellis outlines measured uh, 132 pages. Uh, Hübner's Klein Volkswirt at just 79 pages, and Garrett's Political Economy for Beginners uh, and Fontanelli's Manuale Popolare were a bit longer, 200 and 262 pages respectively, representing the upper limit of this literary genre. 
When we compare these booklets to the most known treatises of classical political economy, we see that the number of pages of the latter almost always goes beyond 250 pages and up to several hundreds of pages. For example, Ricardo's Principle of Political Economy, first edition, had uh, 589 pages. Malthus' Principles had 6001 uh, pages. Uh, Plus, plus six of introductory materials, and James Mill's Elements of Political Economy, which were in their own way an educational textbook, uh, as they had been written for a very peculiar disciple, uh, his son John, measured uh, 304, uh, 304 pages plus eight of prelims. Uh, in turn, John Stuart Mill's principles appeared in two volumes uh, for uh, 593 plus 549 pages. Uh, shortness is accordingly a feature of an elementary discourse on political economy. A problem is that sometimes a textbook whose first edition ranges within these limits grows in size edition after edition, becoming at the end a formal handbook of political economy. So, for example, the fourth edition of Say's Catechism reached 348 pages. Another feature that is still to be explored is the vocabulary. Carolina Flint's applying to Hübner's textbooks the tools of computational linguistics has demonstrated that the variety of words employed, and especially that of, of, of economic terms, was very limited. This study reveals that there is room for a more systematic comparative analysis of the vocabulary of different types of textbooks and treatises of political economy. The abundance of terms and examples derived from everyday li uh, life, uh, the limited number of technical terms, for example, on subjects like, mo like money, credit, international trade, taxation, etc., replaced by more, fam for more familiar words, or the use of proverbs, uh, are certain si signs of the intended elementary nature of the economic discourse developed in this literary genre. A final word must be spent on the professional profile uh, of the authors of elementary textbooks. Say was known as one of the main classical uh, 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 economists, and Jevons, Koss, and Fontanelli were academic economists. But Ellis was a philanthropist and educator. Hübner was a businessman. Uh, Pincero, the author of a, a secondary school textbook, was a secondary school teacher. And Garrett was a brilliant woman, the wife of a blind economist, uh, who was much older than her, and herself a philanthropist who was to become one of the leaders of the feminist movement. This fact suggests that even if the condition of non-academic economist is not a constant and distinctive feature of the authors of, of elementary textbooks of political economy, the authorship of pedagogists and philanthropists is a clear indication of a wish to make political economy a subject of general uh, education. And now uh, I want to, uh, to talk about the global impact of the elementary textbooks, my third part. Perhaps the most striking characteristic of elementary textbooks we have uh, either to examine is represented by their success, not only or not necessarily measured by the number of edition, um, and in the rare case in which we are able to know them by the number of sold copies, but by the number, uh, variety, and global dissemination of translations, adaptations, and imitations. A nice subject for a quantitative research and for a census of this literature would uh, be represented by an analysis of the international circulation and success of elementary manuals uh, compared to in the impact of more formal textbooks uh, and of the classics of economics. And taking, for example, as a parameter the 50 years or so uh, that followed the, follow the first edition. Uh, this time la lapse uh, is reasonable because we can assume that if further editions uh, and translations are published after this term, the book ceases to be a legal educational tools, uh, tool uh, to become a classic. Nevertheless, the cases we have studied reveal that there can be a certain delay between the publication of the original text and it, uh, its translations in different areas of the world. Uh, other indicators of the global impact of these textbooks uh, are the number of review articles in journals and magazines, distinguishing between domestic and foreign journals and from reviews uh, uh, of the original text and reviews of, of its translations. 
uh, to do this, we can take, and it's still uh, to do, a base, uh, uh, as a base JSTOR or the number of reference and quotation taking as a base JSTOR or uh, NCCO or Google Scholar. Nevertheless, a critical warning must be taken into account in the use of these measures. A translational adaptation, especially uh, if it is made in a precise institutional context uh, and is adopted as a textbook in schools and universities, has an impact on hundreds, maybe on thousands of readers. Um, and this estimation would be uh, more significant if we, we knew the number of copies that were purchased. It is possible to make a more precise estimation where academic or school yearbooks, uh, uh, when academic or school yearbooks, Ministry of Education yearbooks, uh, or matriculation reg registers uh, record the number of teachers and st students, uh, as well as uh, lists of recommended readings and adopted textbooks. Augel and I uh, did, did something on, of this kind some years ago for universities, and we discovered that, that at least in these cases, uh, combined information of this kind can be collected. Conversely, a review in a journal, significant as it is uh, of the renown of a work, uh, has a more endogamous, as it were, impact uh, as it is read by a public of peer scholars, pedagogists, uh, or philanthropists, rather than by the masses uh, of the receivers of it. Uh, uh, in our case, uh, the, the mass of the receivers of economic education. After all, a review is at best an invitation to read a book, whereas a translation is a text ready to be read and perused uh, in the idiom of its public. Geography is another important dimension of the impact of textbooks. Uh, one of the most striking dimensions of the success of translations of the elementary textbooks we have described is their global scope. As the examples we are going to make well illustrate, uh, translations and adaptations of European textbooks were published not only in Europe, uh, but in the Americas and in the Far East. Uh, a census of the countries and centers in which uh, and from which translation were, translations were made with the help of infographics can offer an idea of the importance that was attributed to them and indirectly to political uh, co economy as a subject of general education. It also provides an idea of the ling linguistic barriers and of the ways in which they were abated in a world that was already global, uh, albeit not yet homogenized. In the remaining part of this section, I will make some examples to illustrate the potential of the above described analysis. Uh, in a work jointly written with Jean-Pierre Potier, uh, we listed the translation of six catechism that were published in, in Italy in the early and central decades of the 19th century. A census of the global translations, adaptations, and imitation of this work uh, um, is still to come, and it does not announce itself as an easy task, since especially adaptations uh, are not always announced by the titles of relevant, relevant works and must be reconstructed either by the examining full paratext uh, or by carefully comparing the context. An example are the Elementos de Economia Politica that Adrian Pereira for, for Justice Sampaio, first professor of political economy at the University of Coimbra, a case that has been studied by uh, José Luis uh, by, and by uh, Antonio Almodovar, uh, published in uh, uh, 1839, which were actually a free translation and adaptation of Jean-Baptiste Say's catechism. Uh, um, the several far further editions through which this textbook passed, uh, for uh, Sampaio's uh, textbook passed, uh, only to mention uh, those rec uh, um, progressively detached themselves from the original mold and are a proof of the impact that says ideas had on various cohorts of Portuguese law students. Uh, another inter interesting example of the impact of Say's work work is the number of imitation it had. Uh, uh, for example, in Italy from 1831 to 1881, I listed eight uh, uh, different imitation, uh, imitations of uh, uh, this work. Turning to Ellis, Outlines of the uh, Social Economy, the book has apparently only uh, had apparently only three editions in English. Uh, uh, however, uh, it, um, it had a very significant impact uh, if measured by translations. It was translated into French, Italian, German, Dutch, twice uh, in European Portuguese and in Japanese. Uh, I have not been able to find the Russian translation indicated by Mizuta, but it certainly exists. 
Otto, Otto Hübner's Der kleine Volks Volkswirt was another international hit in the mid-19th century. It was translated into Italian by Luigi Cossa and translated and adap adapted into French with brand new chapters added at every new edition by Charles Lerdy de, uh, Lerdy de Beaulieu. Other translations derived from the French one. Uh, so there is also a circulation of translations. Those in Flemish, also promoted by Lerdy de Beaulieu. Uh, those in Spanish, uh, one published in Uruguay and, uh, and a different one in Chile, uh, from which derived two further editions published in Argentina. The Portuguese translation derived from the, the, the Argentinian translation. Uh, why? So from, it was made from Spanish. The Spanish translation was, was made from French, and the Portuguese translation was, translation was, was made from Spanish. Uh, and uh, this translation was published uh, three times, uh, two, in, two in Lisbon, the second one by a publisher uh, who was Brazilian. Uh, and who had bought a, a Portuguese uh, uh, publishing house. So the, 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 there are studies that demonstrate that, uh, the, that uh, the books of this publisher had a market, uh, at least in, nor in, northern, in the northern part, uh, northeastern part of Brazil. Uh, and the last one was published in Macau, so it reached China in a way. Hmm? Uh, while the two Ottoman Turkish translations uh, and uh, at least two Japanese translations directly derived from the Franco-Belgian uh, version. The story of these translations is fascinating. In Italy, Belgium, and France, the book was considered an, an important tool of the post-1848 laissez-faire propaganda against the rising threat of socialism and communism. In Hispanic America, translations were connected to crucial intellectual and political phenomena, connected to the, uh, the emergence of liberal ideas and to various plans for the modernization and internationalization of local economies, uh, as well as to reforms of the, uh, of the educational system. Different translations actually included important adaptations uh, to the historical context uh, and to the local styles of economic and political discourse. The Portuguese translation, mm, uh, well, this, I have already said this. Um, okay. Millicent Garrett's Fawcett Political Economy for Beginners also went through 10 editions from 1878 to 1911. But the book had also a large and truly global success with translation. It was translated into Italian, German, Greek, uh, twice into Japanese, and also into Thailandese. Uh, and uh, uh, there are similar cases that I'll, I'm going to skip uh, concerning the translations of Kosa and the translation of Jevons that reached uh, uh, all the parts uh, of the globe. Um, let, if we make now to a couple of examples of the international spread of some classics of economics, uh, uh, we discover that uh, those classics were less or, or equally trans either equally translated or less translated. And uh, above all, they had only a European uh, circulation in the first decades after their, their, their publication, obviously. For example, uh, translas translations of Ricardo Principes in the first decade, decades after its publication were the famous Fren French translation by Francisco Solano Constancio, and those into oh. German, uh, one from French, one from uh, uh, English, a Polish, a Spanish Castilian, an Italian, a Hungarian, up to the Russian translation of 1895. Uh, the most important treatise of classical political economy so was translated, translated just into six European languages, uh, all translations being published within the old continent. James Mill's uh, elements of political economy were more fortunate, at least in, term of, in terms of geographical spread, uh, perhaps thanks to their educational aim. They went through three editions edition in, Brit in Britain and were translated into French, into American Hispanic Castilian, and only later into Spanish Castilian, three times into Italian and the fourth time as part of the series entitled Biblioteca dell'Economista, uh, edited by Francesco Ferrara, uh, into German, and into Brazilian Portuguese. Uh, these figures are comparable to, if not lower than, those of the main elementary textbooks we have examined. This is an indir indirect proof of their success and of the role that was attributed uh, to them. 
As to my conclusions, uh, this paper aimed to examine the features uh, of a minor literary genre in economics, elementary textbooks. I tried to demonstrate that their aims were at the same time disciplinary and democratic, in that they intended to favor the participation, especially of the future generations, to market society by teaching for thought, industry, and thriftiness, and by widening the constituency of an informed by public opinion. The global su success of such educational tools must have a meaning, and the meaning, I believe, lies in the fact that, as Michel Foucault clearly uh, suggested in the Sciences de la Biopolitique, uh, the liberal fable uh, that an economy based on the governmentality of the market and capital accumulation was not the result of uh, the spontaneous, uh, uh, was the result of the spontaneous uh, uh, harmonization of the individual uh, interests and aims uh, is a fable. Uh, the, the, the participation of people to market society had to be socially constructed by changing the mind and dispositions of individuals through discipline and education. Even in the cases in which translations were promoted more with an eye to public debate than to educational initiatives, these text, textbooks uh, that combined individual inter, enlightened interest and social duties appeared as the best weapon to promote progressive ideas. We have seen in which measure the circulation of elementary textbooks was a global and multilateral phenomenon in which there was a variety of, a variety of countries from which textbooks originated and a much wider variety of target countries in which translations were published. Britain and France occupied a central place uh, as for source text, but Italy and Germany were also represented. The role of France as France, France, sorry, as a mediator in the process of the international circulation and translation is confirmed also in the case of elementary textbooks. And one of the reasons of this phenomenon is the strength and internal organization of the group of Fran Franco-Belgian liberal economies uh, whose initiative in all fields, uh, from association to journals, publishing venture, political activities, and so on and so forth, were imitated through the world. As a matter of, of fact, the most successful elementary textbooks uh, were those who spread a laissez-faire, self-help message. The reason lies in the political meaning, meaning of such texts uh, that were taken by liberal and reformist groups uh, of all the world as flagships for their campaigns uh, for the liberalization of political institutions and modernization of economy and society. Only an elementary textbook uh, uh, like Hermann Schulze Delich's uh, Deutschen Arbeit Catechismus could rival, albeit to a limited extent, their success, thanks, thanks to the network of partisans of cathedral socialismo in France and Italy. But its success, success uh, was European rather than glo global and was limited to a couple of translations, that into French and that into Italian. Among the things that, that still remain to do, there is obviously a census of elementary textbooks uh, published in the 19th century. I have collected a lot of information of them, and they are many. And the quantitative and qualitative analysis that, that I suggested should be applied to them in order to understand their impact and sustainability on societies a long time. Thank you.